All right, we're going to get started. I'm only going to keep you here an hour and a half, okay? Because breakfast is a... <laughs> 15 minutes, that's bad. That's okay. <laughs> we're going to go inside in just a second. I, we won't be here long. I love the sunrise service um, because we're going to spend some time as long as you can take it. It's quiet. You can hear the birds chirping, uh, particularly out here. I've done sunrise services in the city where cars are whizzing by still, but it's a nice quiet setting and the sun's going to come up uh, bright in the sky here. No, no clouds. It's lovely. So thank you for coming out um, and joining us in this wonderful celebration. It's time together as a family. He's risen. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to try this again too. He is risen and your response can be, he is risen indeed. Oh, Angie's. I'm you sorry. can sit down front. I'm I'm not a, not okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's afraid. We're gonna, let's all start praying for her. She doesn't want to be that close to the front. I made fun of Mike's donkey last week. I owe him a big apology. <laughs> donkey lovers are my best friends. Mike, I love it. <laughs> Scripture reminds us in John, the 20th chapter, that early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, so a little earlier than this. How many think this is early? Just by a show of hands. Okay. How many think it's cold? Let's see the show. There we go. All of them. That's unanimous. Well, it says here, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. I want to pause for just a moment and think about Mary and what scripture tells us about Mary Magdalene and that we know that she was a servant. Um, we left last Sunday at Palm Sunday, the, the grand entrance that Christ had and the confusion that the crowd had, over two million of them, remember? And they thought he came to rule here on earth and uh, Christ came to rule in another way. And we know that, that uh, those events were going to unfold. And scripture tells us that as those events unfolded, that was a Sunday, and um, as Jesus uh, spent time there journeying from Jerusalem, he'd spent the night in Bethany, so it was a two mile walk uh, back into town or back into Bethany from the festivities in Jerusalem. And scripture tells us that Mary uh, was there. We don't know if she was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but we see Mary uh, when Christ goes to trial. And we see Mary when Christ hung on that cross. And all four gospel accounts mention the fact that after he, was di after he had died and was buried into the tomb, all four gospel accounts mention Mary Magdalene and others <clears throat> coming to um, adorn the body with different burial spices and uh, and the such. And we see that Mary loved Christ, but was a servant to the very end. Even when he hung on a cross and the disciples were scattered about and nowhere to be found, there was Mary, scripture tells us. So I thought about what that must have been like, that journey that morning. It's early. Um, we find out in the other gospel accounts that there was probably some other women with her. And she walks up to that empty tomb. And all that she had given to Christ and all that time she had spent in service, and even after his death, willing to go to that tomb and to care for this man that she loved so much and was willing to serve to the very end. And she found that tomb empty. And I don't know about you, but in, in ministry, and I got my undergrad in psychology, I've studied grief. And if any of you ever grieved before of loss of a loved one, yes, we all go through cycles of grief. And I don't know where she was in that stage of grief. But when she encountered that empty tomb, that transformed her life of service. Now, Scripture will tell us later that Christ uh, personally goes to Mary and shares with her. She's uh, one of the first to encounter but the first to encounter the risen Christ. But I want you to ponder this morning what the empty tomb means 
for you and I this morning in our service to others. I love to be about helping and serving. I love this community. I share with people all the time that you are a rare breed. You are in Kings Mountain. I am hard pressed to find a single family that's not represented in some way, shape, or form in service around the church. That's unusual. And I, I hesitate to tell you that because I don't want you to think I'm giving you the, an opportunity to take time off. But typically, most churches have 20% of the congregation doing all the work, right? You guys are backwards. I, and I love it because it's like everybody works around here. This is great. But think about our service and what the empty tomb means towards our acts of service. Melissa is going to come and help us to sing. We're going to uh, pick through John 20, but I wanted to break two times. We're going to sing. You might recognize the songs. Otherwise, Melissa passed out some song sheets. If you can hold this microphone, Melissa. I cooled it down for you. <laughs> uh, Melissa doesn't know the words. We even practice. <laughs> well, why don't we stand up? We stand up. Oh, you don't have to. That's okay. <laughs> because he lives. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to Because he lives, acts of service and love and gratitude, much like Mary Magdalene displayed in her life towards Christ, now means something completely different. And we celebrate that fact this morning here at the empty tomb. Scripture also tells us uh, once Mary reached Peter and the other disciple, the, Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. What do you think that other disciple was? <laughs> I, you got to love that, right? I mean, <laughs> he writes a lot like I would have. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, he, claim, he says the one that Jesus loved, that's me. The one that ran side by side with Peter and smoked him, right? Beat him to the tomb. That's definitely two guys, you know, very competitive. But it says that they ran to the tomb, and Peter reached the tomb, or and John outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. I want you to picture something that that morning, I don't believe it was a race to the tomb, but I think it was the passion of those disciples and particularly Peter that drove them to run at full speed to get to that tomb. Because remember we left Christ at the triumphal entry 
And there was a couple days where together the disciples would journey into Jerusalem, Jerusalem and then back to Bethany to stay with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and, and then back into Jerusalem. And then we know what happened that, that evening, Thursday evening, Monday, Thursday, when, when Christ gathered the disciples there together and they ate the Last Supper. And there Jesus explained to them what was about to take place. And we can see the passion of Peter beginning to unfold. Remember they went to the garden? And what happened there at the garden when Christ was praying, do you know? You guys can say, if you speak to it, it'll warm you up. <laughs> That's right. The soldiers came to take Jesus. What else happened there? The, the, yeah, they fell asleep. Were the disciples just like, go ahead and take him? No. I love it. Polar part, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> we know that sword was swung, right? Yes, there's passion there, right? But particularly with Peter, what did Jesus tell was gonna what was he gonna do? Do we know? I'm going to keep going. You want to come and preach this? <laughs> All right, what did he do? What did he tell you? Yeah, but you know what Jesus said Peter was going to do? You say, some of you, it's okay, you can. Yeah, he's going to deny him. You're right. And he did. And Jesus in his love for us said, it's all right, disciples, he's got, they've got to take me away. But for Peter, who was told he's going to deny Christ and was angry about it, but then what did he go and do? He did it. He did it. And so I want you to think about the passion that was there that day when he ran. I'm very passionate, and if we had to run to the church, I might could do that. I might could do that. And I'm very passionate about my service and my ministry, but if I had to run to the highway, even if I got to cut through your backyard, it'd still be, <laughs> I would definitely be out running. It was a long way. And so if I put myself there that if Mary had come to me, maybe scripture would have been a brisk walk. Briskly, Jeff walked to the tomb to see, right? But running, there's a passion there. And encountering that empty tomb, what did that mean for Peter's passion for Christ when that tomb was empty? We know what it meant. We're going to hear about it at the 10 o'clock service because Peter went on to be such a powerful preacher and to even do what for Christ one day? He made the ultimate sacrifice. You know what that is? Death. That's passion. I love the Lord. And if somebody came in here today one, I'd put Mike on them, right? And I would say, Mike, those, those guys made fun of your donkey, too. And I'd put, I'd put Mike on them. But I'm passionate about the Lord. But if somebody came to take my life, I want you to know, I'm, I'm going to second guess that. Because i got a wife and three kids, and, and I'm not ready to go. I want to say that I would die for the, for the cause and for, for Christ and for the ministry. I gotta be honest here this morning. I, that's a passion that I strive to have, but I don't know if I'm there right now. But I want you to recognize that passion that Peter had, and when he encountered that empty tomb, what that meant for him, and how it transformed who he was to the point so much so that he went on to be the great preacher and teacher and leader that he was. He was so passionate that he laid his life down for the call and the gospel and for Christ. Let's sing about one more song about, yeah, Melissa, don't get too comfortable on this. We're almost done. This is it. You're gonna sing, she's gonna sing from a seat. To, no, no, she's standing. Let's stand together. I have to stand, you have to stand. He is Lord.
stay standing because we are almost done. Now it's your turn, and you can determine how long we want to stay here. And I don't say it in a bad way because I'd stay here till breakfast. Real fast, before we get into the last portion of scripture, just look back over those trees. That's awesome. The sun is going to be coming up here. And unfortunately, it's not going to warm you that much yet. <laughs> but the sun's coming up over the trees. And we're, what a beautiful setting. I love it. I was telling Melissa on the way in, the only thing that would make it better is if some deer just wanted to walk out from behind the church and hang out in the field. I love I'm a hunter and a fisherman, and I love, I would love it. I wouldn't chase the deer down and try to harm them today. They, I would just enjoy their beauty. But listen to what Scripture tells us. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first, again, making, just pointing it out, also went inside. He saw and believed. He saw and believed. And I don't know where you are this morning, other than a little cold and probably tired. But I want you to think about, as you look at that cross, and you're outside in a setting, and you can imagine what it must have been like for those disciples that early morning. And we understand where Mary going to the tomb in another act of service for her Savior, who she didn't know was going to be risen, but she was going just to for this great man that taught her so much and loved her so much, she went to to still serve. And then for the for Peter, as he raced so hard and so passionately to get to that tomb and, and what that empty tomb must have meant for him and his passion for the Lord. But then for the other disciple to walk in after all this had unfolded and saw Peter's passion and the reaction and, and saw into the eyes of, of Mary and and, and saw her broken heart for she loved to serve and felt like somebody had taken the body of Christ and she couldn't continue to serve. So this other disciple sees all of that, looks down into that empty tomb, and scripture tells us he believed. What does that empty tomb this morning do for your belief, or maybe perhaps your unbelief? I'm reminded this morning of all Christ did for us and as I was preparing this message thinking about how that empty tomb transforms the way I serve and the passion in which I do the things that Christ has called me to do and how more than just this morning on this brisk morning with the sun coming up over the trees but day after day Christ chooses to remind me, like that empty tomb did, he reminds me of his love. Every day that I journey with my wife, I'm reminded of the love of Christ that, that draws us together and allows us to share in this relationship together and has opened up doors of opportunity to share ministry. Every day that I get to love on my kids one more day and to, to instruct them and encourage them and guide them. I'm, I'm, I don't take that responsibility lightly. And there's so, there's so many questions and, and most of the time they really just can frustrate you, right? But, but I don't take that lightly and, and God uses that as, an, as a reminder of his love for me. When I get to be here with you and hear the stories of how you're serving in a community and how Christ is moving in your life, just like that empty tomb, those two are reminders of, of Christ's love. And so I don't want to just rush away from this. And if you got, if you have to, that's I understand, and, and you can go inside. But I want to take this time to hear from you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We know this. This is not new to you. You have celebrated that fact for many, many years. But how this morning is it a fresh and a new? How is that empty tomb this morning a reminder of Christ's love for you in your life? Just share some words of testimony and, and praise. What, what's happening in your life that's, that you can see that you're reminded of that fact? 
this morning. That's awesome. And that a great reminder. Could everyone hear that in the back? Like, Debbie, you gotta turn around and yell that. <laughs> but we're reminded today, and I'm the same way, I always think back about family members that aren't here this Easter. Because God's called them home. And we don't go and and worship and see an empty tomb necessarily, but we do. Because that grave is symbolic of just flesh and bone lie in those graveyards, right? But we know that essentially those caskets are empty too. Because the spirit of our loved ones are with him this morning. And what an Easter celebration. I'm looking forward to that. Not yet. Not yet, right? Still still want to celebrate here with you. Yes. that example on the cross, right? It's a hard thing to fathom for some people, but if you truly love the Lord, you don't care if somebody's served their whole life or 10 minutes, <laughs> right? Because one minute with Christ in your heart, we should celebrate that fact, as well as, and I admire and celebrate the fact of somebody that's had Christ in their heart for years and years and years. I love that. And we, that, we're reminded of that promise. Morning. Thank you. Beautiful. This is a family time right here. Diane, let's. tomb reminds us of that hope. I, I do not know how the world does it day in and day out without that hope. It baffles me. Those that, that aren't going to wake up this morning and, and recognize and be in awe of an empty tomb that are going to go out and do it on their own power. I, it, we're going to talk about that at 10 o'clock. It really does baffle me. And that's what makes me pray all the harder for those folks that, that do not know the hope have in Christ. Thank you. Amen. That's the, that's the act right there. That empty tomb meant that Christ conquered death. For us, and now we don't have to fear death because for all eternity, because of that act that Christ did not hanging on the cross for our sins, but the empty tomb. I tell you what, this is a different Easter for you, right? And I'm glad you shared. I've thought a lot about you lately because a good friend of mine is going through that right now. This Easter, he wakes this morning to cancer. And you know what? That empty tomb 
still represents the same thing for people that are awakened this morning to cancer, as well as those that have beaten. Actually, you have a fresh perspective on it. You know, that's awesome. That's powerful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's the other thing, too. We have that. I love the fact, too, Christ, if you read through Scripture, Christ didn't just leave the, empty, the tomb empty and let them guess, right? He came back and he shared with them. And we have that. We have that reassurance as well. Not only did he come back and see them in his earthly form, but what else did Christ give us? The Holy Spirit. Man, that empty tomb means that we have now the Holy Spirit alive and well in our hearts this morning. And what a reassurance. And Christ has never left us or forsaken us or, you know, turned his back on us. And that's beautiful. We celebrate that this morning. I do have a microphone if you need it. And actually, I feel much warmer now. The sun's in my face. You guys should come up here and try it. This is awesome. A couple more. We are not. We have no. Well, we have a time limit because you guys can stay. But at 8:45, I'm eating breakfast. I'm just. I'm going to be honest with you. I like to eat. You can stay all you want, as long as you want. All right. I tell you what, thank you all for taking the time to come out. And I don't want to race you away from this because it is beautiful. And I'm going to pray. And you can stay as long as you want and share testimony as long as you want. But I want you to soak this in and look at that as the sun hits those crosses this morning. We have much to be thankful for and to celebrate this morning. And I'm looking forward to our time together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending us your son. Literally, the sunshine this morning as it begins to shine on the three crosses on this hill. But we pause to celebrate the fact that you sent Jesus Christ humbly born in that manger. You raised him to be the spotless, perfect man that he was and to for those three years of his ministry to teach us so much. And Father, for that ultimate sacrifice, that he would lay down his life for us and hang on a cross, innocent, and die such a cruel and awful death. But this morning we're here, taking and soaking in this nature and, and the quiet. And we're reminded as we celebrate around uh, this figurative empty tomb. We know what scripture tells us. We believe that to be true in our hearts this morning. That after three days, we raised Christ from the dead. And that empty tomb this morning reminds us so much, as we've already heard, of hope, peace, reassurance. It gives new meaning to our acts of service and kindness and love to this community. Because of that empty tomb, we, like Peter, can be so passionate about serving you, even if it meant our own lives. And Father, I pray this morning that the thought of that empty tomb, like the other disciple experienced, would strengthen our belief in you. I pray that this celebration would, would revive us and renew our spirits and, and that we would uh, look forward to the days ahead of going out and by our example of your love and grace and mercy living through us that, that we'd be able to reach this community around us that so desperately needs to have this hope and reassurance that we shared about this morning. I pray that you would bless uh, the remaining part of this morning together. You would bless our fellowship and this food to nourish our bodies. And as we gather at 10 o'clock to celebrate uh, collectively that you would just be in that service and that we would know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that your, the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit was amongst us this morning. We thank you to that end. It's in our precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.